Well, it's come down to this. Arkansas, Kentucky, Bud Walton Arena, CBS, final game of the season. Let's talk about it. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday. Finally made it to the weekend. Apologize by not having a podcast up yesterday. Just got uh, a lot of stuff with my uh, with my job over at The Buzz. That uh, ended up uh, taking a lot of my time, but that's okay uh, because uh, today is perfect because we're going to talk about Arkansas and Kentucky and do a little previewing of them and uh, what to expect out of this game. Because right now, I know Arkansas basketball fans are hurting. You're not exactly feeling confident, strong, thinking that it's all going to be okay, thinking that this NCAA tournament, once it arrives, that's when it's going to get turned on. And you know what? I understand. I understand why you don't necessarily feel that way considering how The game against Tennessee went, but luckily for the Arkansas Razorbacks, they've had extra time to get ready for Kentucky. They are back at home. It's going to be a packed out crowd at Bud Walton Arena. It's going to be a raucous crowd at Bud Walton Arena, and it's Kentucky. And as much as uh, Auburn fans and Bama fans and everybody out there would like to think that they're blue bloods, that they're the best programs in basketball history, Kentucky does mean just a little bit more to people. It always has, and it always will. So Arkansas now finds themselves in a position to where they don't have to win this game to be in the NCAA tournament because just looking at the net ranking and how great it is, Arkansas will be a tournament team regardless. That's at least how you would think. But still, you want to be able to end the regular season on a high note, especially at home. You've already lost more home games this year than you have in the last two years, if I'm not mistaken. If you consider the Hofstra game a home game. Okay, fine. We won't consider that one a home game. But the point is, you have lost just as many home games this year that you did in the past two years combined. Two. You lost to Alabama at home. You lost to Mississippi State at home. It's pretty still a pretty good record, like a really good record. But it's not something that Arkansas fans are used to. They don't like losing at home. They don't know what it's like to lose at home a bunch of times. It's just not a thing because Bud Walton Arena means that much more. And so to keep from that happening and losing three games, all in conference play and Bud Walton Arena, Arkansas really needs this game and really needs to take care of business in this game. And I think they will. Uh, Arkansas and Kentucky faced each other already this year earlier. And man, that did not go well for Kentucky, but it went awesome for Arkansas. In fact, you could not have asked for a better performance out of the Razorbacks than what you got to see when they went to Rupp Arena. Just think about how far away that seems. Like it's, It's like eons ago. When that game took place. But the thing is, when you actually look at the, the calendar and you look at uh, you know when it took place and everything, it was less than a month ago. And so Arkansas went to Rupp and absolutely destroyed the Wildcats in a way that uh, they are not used to at home either. Like there were fans there at Kentucky that were clearing out, completely clearing out with about four or five minutes left to go in the game. So Kentucky's one and one a little bit of revenge for that. But Arkansas is going to have to to bring their A game just like they did in that particular game. Now, the difference is is that you have Nick Smith back and you didn't have him for that game and you were able to still win. But in this particular game, Kentucky is the one that is dealing with a few injuries, particularly to Cason Wallace, who has been so good for uh, Kentucky this year. He might be back. We haven't heard anything for certain on whether or not he is going to be playing in this game against Arkansas. But He was literally the only one that did anything against you the first time y'all played. 24 points for him in 39 minutes. Had five assists, three steals, two blocks. Uh, Just he was he was a monster. But luckily for Arkansas, he was the only monster for them because Shibwe was completely and totally out of the game. Toppin didn't do anything. You know, Reeves played 30 minutes. He didn't do anything. Uh, So Frederick didn't do anything. So you just did a really good job defensively, and now looking like Kaysen Wallace, if he's out against Arkansas, you would think that that would be a huge benefit to the Razorbacks. But here's what it's going to come down to for me in this particular game. All right. To me, it's going to come down to the Mitchell twins. 
The Mitchell twins have been MIA. They have been missing. They are on milk cartons around the state over the past two games. Now, I'm not trying to be overly critical of them because they have had so many great games this year and have been a huge part of the Razorbacks team, and they have fought, and they have been, they have been really great at times. But when it comes to this particular game and matchup, you have to have great performances out of at least one of the Mitchell twins. I will take both, but you have to be able to do that because that right there is why you were so successful against Kentucky and Oscar Shibway. And the first time these two teams met, I know that you had great performances out of Ricky Council, Anthony Black, even Devo performed really well. Jordan Walsh had a great game. He didn't miss a shot. He, he got 13 points. But it was about Mikel Mitchell and his ability to get 15 points on 7 of 9 from the field. He had four rebounds and five block shots, no turnovers. And the defense that he and his brother Makai put up against Oscar Shibway was e exceptional. Makai had nine rebounds in that game. He only had four points, but he only took one shot and made two free throws. But he had nine rebounds, two assists, one steal, no turnovers. So those guys played so well in that first game. They have to play great in this game. If they, if the Mitchell twins bring it, if they put together a performance kind of like what they did in the first time that these two teams met, Arkansas wins this game. Arkansas wins this game. I think it's as simple as that. Because even if Cason Wallace does play, I don't know if he's going to be 100%. I think Ar Arkansas saw what he did in the first game, and they're going to be better prepared defensively to go up against him too. So to me, it's just going to come down to limiting Oscar Sheba. You do that, Arkansas wins. Now, on top of that, that's also under the assumption that Nick Smith, Anthony Black, Debo Davis, Ricky Council, maybe Jordan Walsh, mainly Jalen Graham, whoever, however many, actually get something going offensively. That's key. That's important. You got to be able to bring it. The energy is going to be high there in Bud Walton. So hopefully that can fuel the Razorbacks. And they have been such a much better team at home this year. Obviously, they always are. So I think. Uh, going to assume, and it's probably never going to come back and bite me, but I'm going to assume that Arkansas's offense will be just fine in this game too. So I, I just, I, I like where it's placed. I like the game. I like the matchup. And I like how Arkansas uh, has a great opportunity to bounce back. Now, that being said, it doesn't erase anything. You know, it, it's, it's a great performance that is definitely needed. And so I, I'm all for that. I'm like, I'm all for putting it together and and making it work in this particular game and then ending it on a high note and feeling good about that. Like, I'm not going to hate on anybody for not feeling good about it, but it's still just going to become, I'm like, okay, that's great. But let's see what you do in the SEC tournament. Let's see what you do here. Let's see what you do there. Like those things, that's what I'm going to need uh, to check out and to see. So I am cautiously optimistic, but I think Arkansas takes care of business in this game. I want to see all the guys that are going to be having their final game at Bud Walton Arena tonight, uh, or tomorrow, I should say. I want to see them really show out, which is so funny because Kamani Johnson's the only one that's going to go through senior day because he's the only legit senior. Technically, air quotes around that, everybody else on the team can come back for another year. Technically. Mitchell Twins, Trevin Brazil, Ricky Council, Debo Davis, everybody can technically come back for one more year if they so choose. Now, the question is going to become, will they choose that? <laughs> is that something they're actually going to want to do? I don't know. I really don't know. I have no idea where some of the minds are at. But I've had this question posed to me. It's like, okay, so who will be back next year? If, I, if you're just leaning with your gut, who will be back next year? Well, here's what I'll say, again, going off of my gut feeling. I think Trevin Brazil comes back to Arkansas. I think he comes back. I think Devo comes back. I think the Mitchell Twins come back. I think they do. I mean, I know that they may get just itching to go into uh, the NBA or into the pros, but I would think that they would come back. I mean, they've been, they've gotten a lot of playing time. They've started most games. They've had obviously no muss and know what this team and the program's about. So I think they would come back. Uh, I know the McDonald's all Americans guys, I do not expect any of those guys to come back. I don't think council comes back. So I, I lean towards that. Jalen Graham could technically come back, but he, he may move on. I don't know. I just don't feel as strong about him just because of his minutes and inconsistent playing time. Um, and then all the freshmen. That one's the one where I'm just like, I have no idea because Darian Ford, Joseph Pinion, Barry Dunning, those guys could move on and enter the transfer portal just like we've seen because they didn't play much this year. So I could see that. I hope they all come back. That'd be great. But we know with Muss, he's going to manage the roster. you got two five-stars coming in next year. We know he's going to hit that portal hard. 
But there is a possibility, not saying for sure, but there is a possibility that next year's team could be the highest percentage of returnees under Eric Musselman that he's had since he's been at Arkansas. Like, how crazy would that be? Wouldn't see that very much either. But anyways, uh, and also before we uh, go, I have to, of course, play uh, this clip because I think uh, we're going to talk about the scheduling and, and what Eric Musselman talked about. But uh, anytime that Arkansas comes to Bud Walton Arena, you always think about the Michael Qualls put back dunk. Well, courtesy of Arkansas Athletics. Sorry, I got to play the clip because it's still one of my favorite of all time. Go. Qualls could extend the lead to three. Free throw is on the way, and it's good. 85-82 Arkansas. Chance to win it here. Shot clock's off. Kentucky's got it. Harrison across the timeline. 22 seconds. Harrison right side gives way to Young. Young crossover dribble. Top of the key. Three-pointer no good. Poitras goes over. Portis is back. No call. Back out front. Young for three, and it's good with 10.2 seconds to go. Tied at 85. Hogs don't have a timeout. Five seconds to go. Madden right side. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Close with the dunk at the buzzer. It goes and Arkansas wins. It goes and Arkansas wins. Close with a two-hand finish. Arkansas wins the ball game. They're gonna check the replay, but it's gonna count, and the Hogs are gonna win. That's unbelievable shot. Madden makes hits the three, couldn't quite get it to go down. Qualls goes what a up, finish. makes a sensational play. That's Sports Center all over. You know, a little throwback gives me chills every time. And the never yield stuff always gives me a creeps. But either way, what a play. Missed that so much. I was on the front row of the student section for that one. I don't think I slept for three days after that one. So let's hope that doesn't come down to that. Still one of the greatest plays I feel like doesn't get enough uh, love when it comes to all-time great buzzer beaters in college basketball history. Folks, midway point of the NBA season is here, and right now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, our, America's number one sports book, because the new customers like you get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes drain, no matter what it is. You can bet on it with FanDuel. They even let you combine your bets at a chance to get a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, I thought it was pretty fascinating, something that Eric Musselman said in his press conference about scheduling. And thinking about Arkansas' schedule and the conference slate and what it's been like just so far this year, especially down the stretch. And, you know, it's not an excuse. We're not making excuses. I'm not making excuses because you still got to take care of business and take care of those games. But I did think it was a pretty fascinating thing when he was asked about the schedule. And he says, quote, I don't have any metrics in front of me, but I'm assuming our SEC schedule was as tough as any team having played Alabama twice. This will be our second time playing Kentucky and playing A&M twice. And then you throw into the mix of playing at Auburn and at Tennessee and no return home games in that. It really starts to add up, not to mention also twice against Missouri, who is also an NCAA tournament team. He also continues to say, I've said it a hundred times when I came into the league, it was a little eye opening how the balance of the schedule can really affect your schedule. Up until this juncture of my coaching career, any place I've ever been, it's been a balanced schedule. It's a balanced schedule in the NBA. You play everybody in the West a certain amount of times. You play everybody in the East once at home and once on the road. The Mountain West was balanced, but it wasn't the case this year and it's completely and totally unbalanced. So I thought it was pretty eye opening for that and for us to talk about that more. And if you want more examples of it, Arkansas played last year, which, by the way, every team, they play Missouri, LSU, and AM twice every year. Those are their permanent home and home games in the SEC, which in most cases is pretty good. But this year, Missouri and AM were actually good, but LSU was trash. Unfortunately, you still lost one of those games. So, um, but last year, you had home and homes against Mississippi State and Tennessee, which you won against Mississippi State at home, lost the first game on the road. 
And then Tennessee won at home, lost on the road. But your homes were last year, Vanderbilt, Kentucky, Auburn, South Carolina. But then you had to go to Florida, to Ole Miss, to Georgia, and to Alabama. Now, you lost the Alabama game and a close one, but you won those other three games. So if you think about how different that was last year, where the only teams that you played twice that actually went to the NCAA tournament last year, you played LSU, you beat them three times, which was crazy. But Tennessee, you played home and home against. And that was it. As far as teams that made the NCAA tournament, that was it. And so this year, bam, just like that. You play Missouri, you play AM, you play in Kentucky, and you play Bama. Those are eight games against NCAA tournament teams. Those are virtually half your games against NCAA tournament teams with your home and homes this year. And then your home games were against Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Florida, and Georgia. Only one of those teams might make the NCAA tournament, which we know home games are important. But then you went on the road to Auburn, to Tennessee, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt still could maybe make it into the NCAA tournament, but Auburn and Tennessee look like they're going to be as well. So you're talking about just a complete total 360, or I guess 180, of a schedule that happened from last year to this year. Now, again, it's not an excuse. No one's making – I'm not making excuses. Muss isn't making excuses. you got to win the games that are in front of you. But it is a little over the top when you start thinking about the unbalanced schedule like that. Now, I will throw the league a little bit of a bone here because I don't think that anyone would have thought that Missouri would be as good as what they are this year or even A&M would be as good as what they are this year. So I, I'll give them that. But Alabama, for sure, everyone knew was going to be good. At Auburn, was, it was going to be a tough one. I think Tennessee, of course, was going to be into the mix where you had a road game there too. So it's just, it, it's a gauntlet. It's an absolute gauntlet. So my hope is, and this is maybe my optimism that ever comes in, which I know some of, so many of you love pointing out each and every day. But uh, my hope is, is that uh, this will be something that can, uh, help Arkansas, and obviously why it's helped them in the net rankings, but also be something to maybe when they get to the NCAA tournament, they're like, ooh, finally, we can take a little bit of a breather and not have to worry about playing this gauntlet of an SEC schedule with back-to-back -back games. We can go in and go off against a foe that knows know much about us. We don't know much about them. We can game plan because I still believe Muss is one of the best game planner coaches out there, especially when he has four-plus days. His record is impeccable when it comes to that. So I still expect them to... Hopefully uh, have, a, have a really good outing there. And being in neutral courts, too, is always extremely helpful because Arkansas is not going to have to play any more road games the rest of the way, which is nice. So uh, that's going to be big for them. And I think that if they, of course, beat Kentucky at home, uh, that'll be huge. But think about how the schedule ended, too. I mean, you had three straight games against Bama, Tennessee, Kentucky. Bama and Tennessee on the road in those games, which, you know, again, some, surely you could have balanced that out a little bit better, SEC. Like, could you not have had, like, on the road to Tennessee earlier in the year, maybe instead of having it to where you knew all three of these games and all three of these teams were going to be good. And you gave Arkansas two of the three on the road in the season. That's, that seems a little bit brutal, but uh, to be at the end of the season and to kind of get to the, you know, fatigue that comes in in conference play, uh, that's been a lot for Arkansas to handle. So anyways, they got to take care of business though. That doesn't matter what anybody says. They got to do what they got to do. But still, I thought it was really fascinating when you actually do look at the schedule, the difficulty that Arkansas has had this year and the SEC compared to some other teams. In fact, if you look at also the win-loss totals of the opponents in the SEC, Arkansas has the toughest schedule far and away, and it's not really even close when it comes to SEC play. Folks, I got to tell you about Bill Bar. I know that we're all still struggling to eat healthy. It's tough. It's tough. But Luckily for you, Built Bar is great when it comes to fast, convenient, tasting amazing, and being extremely healthy for you. I talk about Built Bar, and I've talked about Built Bar for many years on this podcast, and there's a reason why. It's not because I'm just here to say it and just walk through the basics of telling you why. Oh, no, it's really good. No, I have them myself. I buy them myself. I eat them myself. They are tremendous. They taste amazing, and they come in so many different flavors that you can choose from, and they're always coming out with new, unique flavors and new, unique products all the time. So no matter what it is, if you want to just get after it and start getting something that's really healthy and tastes great, take it from me, get yourself some built bars You can go to built.com, check out all the different bars and flavors to choose from there. You can also go to your local Walmart or Sam's club. They have them in the pharmacy section. Very easy to do that as well. So no matter what your desire is, when it comes to great tasting, healthy protein bars, built bar has you covered. Check them out at built.com or at your local Walmart and Sam's club. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, 
your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, I do want to do a little spring football because that is coming up. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's around the corner. In fact, next week is when it starts, if I'm not mistaken, March 7th. So, yeah, March 6th, March 7th, Some, sometime next week. I know that it, it, it starts next week. But either way, it's pretty exciting uh, to see all the new things that are going on. Nowhere in the thick of basketball season and baseball is getting revved up. But I, I did th- think it was really cool to see that Torian Carter got cleared. Uh, Torian Carter has been a guy who got hurt around like this time last year. He was the starting defensive tackle or the nose guard, however you want to put it, for Arkansas in spring practice, was really good and then suffered an injury that took him out for the entire year. Now, is that the difference of why Arkansas – Struggle this year, no, but I think having as many great players as you possibly can, especially on the defensive line and depth-wise, is always very important. So uh, Torian Carter, though, has been officially cleared to play. Put it on social media saying, today is one of the best days of my life as I am cleared. Thankful for the man above and my friends and family. President Carter has returned. Let's get to work. He's 6'3", 294 pounds, and uh, he was uh, somebody that could have maybe been available at the end of last season, but uh, they decided to take a medical redshirt. So he still has two more years of eligibility. It's pretty incredible because he also gets that 2020 season with that. Like the 2020 year has thrown everything off. I don't, I feel like everybody can just come back anytime that they want. So, uh, the fact that Travis Williams, of course, is going to be mixing it up a little bit defensively, going with a 4 2 5 look, uh, they're probably going to have him more at the defensive tackle position than it was as much as the nose guard. And, uh, they're going to have to get some guys in there that could clog the run there too. So, I, I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about seeing the new coaches and the new players and everybody getting involved there too. And hopefully it ends up being a successful spring that Sam Pittman can uh, be excited about too and uh, and bring it bring it forward as well. So either way, we'll see how it goes. But appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. I should say next weekend. Get that mixed up all the time. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you then.